everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make this gatefold card and inside it has a book fold. So it's kind of like a shadow box. So I've got my woodland animals on the front here and I've made this belly band. So you just slide this off and then when you open it up, you have this, what they call a book fold. Now I actually saw this on Becky's place. I think it was, yeah, Becky Becky's place or Becky's blog spot. I'll link it in my blog. And you can see you just get this really cool effect so it is like a shadow box but the good thing about this is, is it will obviously you know fall more flat than you would with the shadow box shadow boxes you don't tend to squash down whereas this you can and i've done it so that it will this is a half inch i think side to it so it's really fun you've got your space on the back there to be able to write your message i actually made this one during a facebook live so there's a few things i'm going to tweak and i'll do that today in this uh, YouTube video but you know any theme you want you can have anything in your kind of diorama section there because you've got all those layers that you can attach to all these pieces here and it's just yeah I really had fun creating this in this lovely little scene so let me show you how to make it so first of all we we'll do the square which is all those book folds so you'll want four pieces of five and seven eighths of an inch by five and seven eighths of an inch. The reason I've done that size is because by the time you put them all together it will actually become more of a six by six size. With the live I actually done them so they were all six by six and then it went up to six and one eighth which was just a bit odd. So I've come down a bit and it means that everything else will fit better. So four pieces of five and seven eighths of an inch squared and then along one of the sides you're going to score every half an inch. So half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and then five and a half. And don't worry that that end is just slightly under. It's going to be all folded in. And if anything, that's actually going to be on the back and we're going to be putting a, a larger piece of cardstock to hold it all together. Okay, so you've got all of those pieces there. You will then want two pieces of six by six. So this one here, which is going to go onto the very back of the card and this piece is going to be on the front of the card and I'm going to cut my aperture into this. So two pieces of six by six and then these pieces are for the gatefold and these are two pieces that are four and one eighth of an inch by six and one eighth because we need that height and along the short side you're going to score at, that would be better if I do it this way, you want to score at half an inch and one inch. And you just do that on both pieces, half an inch and one inch. Okay, so that is all of the scoring done. So I'm going to start off with a mountain and then I'm going to go into a valley. And each time I fold, just burnish it. And then again. Now I am using the 300 GSM card so you can just about get away with it. But um, probably maybe a 250 would be better a bit softer and easier to work with but like I said it does work with the 300 GSM and then when they're all together just kind of make sure that it lines up so it sits on top of each other sometimes they can kind of slope off to one side so just kind of build it up so it does sit nicely on top of itself and you want to do that four times so you can see I've got my pieces here then make sure you've got the smaller end you know that bit where I said don't worry if it's just slightly under half an inch have that on the bottom okay so I've got two pieces here so I've got on the top here I've got the full half inch sections what you're going to do is grab some I'm going to use my quick grab glue and the one in my left hand I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just up here I'm then going to sit this one over the top I'll just bring that up there. Okay, you can see that I've just sat it on top of this one here. Make sure I hold that in place. Okay, and then when it's dry, if you keep these two squashed down here, so they go under this one here, once you've got the first one started, all of these, let's say all these valleys, are going to lock under all of the mountains on this side. So that one there, and then it's hard for me to hold it up to the camera. That one there, and then that one there. And just push them all in. And you'll see all of a sudden it will just lock in and hold itself. See there? And then with the one on the top, 
whatever one's sitting over the top, you're just going to pop a little bit of glue on and then close that. But now you've got this kind of springy corner. Then I'm going to go to the next one again, making sure I've got that slightly shorter side. And whatever one I stuck, so I had it on the back side here. So I'm just going to pop a bit of glue. And again, I'm just going to stick that onto the back and just let that grab. You do want to make sure you've got nice right angles with this as well. So just kind of wrap it around like that maybe whilst you get it into place. Okay, and then again, the very bottom one is going to go right under at the end there. And then you're going to start making sure that every valley is under a mountain. And then I'll finish with the top. And again, it will kind of just pop into place like so. And you'll see it just pops in. And then again, the top one is going to go over the top so it matches this one here. Really push it up and you'll get that nice right angle anyway. And then again, pop a little bit of glue under there and just let that grab. Okay, and then again, you'll see we've got that springy corner. But this one here, again, I'm gonna start with that one. I'm gonna pop a bit of glue on both the ends there. And then I'm just going to sit both of those corners in there. And just bring up the side of it just again so you know it's right up as close as it can be. And then again with this one, I'm just going to pop that bottom one right down in there first. And then just slot each one in, do that side first. Okay, had to re-stick the bottom because one of them popped open. But now I can just pop that glue in there. Again, just make sure that you've got nice right angles on all your corners. And you know you will because you'll be able to get it into that square shape. Okay, so now you've got your frame. You see that moves nice in. That looks lovely just stuck on the front of a 6x6 card. You can put a nice topper in there. Obviously if this was maybe in a different colour. And you can attach things all in here so you can do a lot more with it. Now I'm going to stick it onto one of my 6x6 pieces but before I do that I want to add my background so using my scenes paper pad this is currently sold out but we have it on order but that is 6x6 you can see it sits just perfectly over there so I'm just going to use some of my Kalau glue and get that stuck down. So I just realised you actually want to bring this down to six because we made those five and seven eighths. It's because I was thinking about the live. So I'm just, these two side pieces, they were six and one eighth, bring them down to six. I made them six and one eighth originally because it was following the live, but I've changed it slightly. Fold and burnish the two score lines and then you're going to stick this piece onto the back here. Okay, and you shouldn't see it when you open this side because it will be flush with these because these are half inch. So I know this tab's slightly shorter, but it will still be okay. It's enough for it to grab onto. So I'm just going to pop some glue down there. And I'm just going to stick the last piece and just let it hug itself around the card and just make sure that it sits nice and you've got equal kind of if there is any overhang just make sure it's equal and that way you know it's going to close and cover everything that's inside there like that and then I'll do the same with this one I'm going to add the glue onto this smaller piece because if you add it onto the tab then you're going to get glue sticking onto the pieces inside here so Again, I'm just going to kind of let it hug around. Now you might feel you need to, if you don't push these right in as much as you can, then you might find that you don't have any overhang. But you can see I've got a little bit there. 
So I am just going to trim that off a little bit. Okay, and you'll see there it will close up. Now, if you don't like it overlapping the gate folds, then you can just snip it away a bit. But I do, it just ensures that everything's closed and when the belly band's over the top, you know, that's completely hidden. And then when we open it, you'll see everything inside. So now that's all secure, I can then run my glue over the top of this piece and then around all four sides. And then I can get my piece here and this will line up perfectly with I'm going to turn it over because it's easier to add the pressure from this side than the other. Okay, so instantly we have our scene. Now, I should have also mentioned and what I did in the live, which I've not done here, but it's fine because it, it won't make, you know, it's easy to add things in. If you want to slot things in, don't stick your top one on yet. Stick that down last so you can then bring in all of these bits. Now, whilst that's drying, this is the um, additions. So I just want to show you that you can use the additions on its own because I know a lot of people have just purchased this. So it's just giving you, you know, some nice ideas on the fun kind of cards that you can make. So I've cut this piece here, which is five and three quarters squared. And I'm going to stick this over the top here. But before I done that, I took the, this die here and die cut that into that section. Okay, so that will go here, but before I add that one, I also went ahead and I die cut this big one here. And I've die cut it in lots of different colours there. So I've got like a gold craft card and a brown. And then I've also die cut it so I have just the bottom and I've just kind of snipped into it. What I want to do is actually pop this over the bottom. So I didn't do this in this card. And I just pulled out pinks and oranges to pull out the colours in the pattern paper. I did add the green there, but not on the, the rest of them. So I just wanted to do it on these. Again, just show you other ways to use these. So I'm going to stick that one over that one. And I'm going to stick add the darker brown at the back. I, might, I probably won't use that gold. So I'll have that one stuck on there. So you can see how they're going to layer up in front of each other. And then I've got this one which is going to, oh no mate, that was it. So that was if I was gonna have the three. So I'll keep that one for another project. I'm gonna stick with those two. So that's the dies that I've used. You also have the happy birthday, which I'm going to use. And then you've got your little toadstools here. You've got your tree trunk, but I already have those pre-cut and I'll show you all those in a moment. But like I was saying, if you leave this one off, you can just kind of slide these down inside, but it's really easy to just pop things in, as you can see, whilst it's open, like so. And then that means I've got the room to then stick them. I can see where I'm sticking it along the top here as well. So what I'm gonna do with this, it's easier just to use your quick grab. And I need to stick this down first, see I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to pop some glue on this one and just lay that over the top there okay and then I'm just going to run my glue just a thin layer along the very bottom because that's all that's really going to sit in the bottom and then just a little bit along the tops here and then it doesn't really matter where you put this I'm just going to hold it up a bit just so I can see first of all where I'm putting it and then I'll bring it up so you can see so I think that you've got I'm probably going to stick it in the second one. So you've got the one that's closest there and then you've got this one. I'm going to pop it in at there. So I'm just going to sit that in. So all those pieces are in and then I can just push that down and they've all stuck in place. So we've got our first layer and you can pop things behind here. You can see now we've got that dimension coming along. And then with this one, I'm going to pop the green piece over the top and then with this one I'm going to stick it not in the very front but in the second one from the front there so again there's just a little bit between each one so again I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just along there and along these top pieces.
And once you're happy where it is, just push them down. So now, you see, it looks like a little storybook. It looks so cool. So that's that in place. And then I have this one, which is going to go over the very front to, co to complete that seam. So I'm going to use this glue this time. And then just lay that over the top. And okay. And then I have this piece here. Now I've actually cut this very small little, I call it my little beveled frame because it does, it's got like a little arch to it. And I got that from die cutting the squares in the slider. But you can make that frame with anything you want, but in here it was just the two biggest squares. I just cut them, run them through at the same time, and it will give you that very tiny frame. So I'm just going to add a very small bead of glue and get that stuck down. That just kind of fills the green space there. Then you won't need that now actually. I don't know why I thought you would need it because that's all completely covered. So next I'm going to cut this piece here and this is going to cover these sections. So these are three and one eighth, so I'm going to cut two and seven eighths to five and three quarters. Then I'm going to have that one there and then that one there. So it's just going to continue that kind of little storybook. Stick those down. So I'm actually going to cut another two and have them for the front. This is the 6x6 pad. It's not available at the moment, but we will get it back in stock. And you've just got these lovely scenes. You've got 24 sheets. So I'm just going to cut the same again and stick them on the front. Okay, so that's the front now stuck down. Really like the scene on the front. And then you see when you open it. I've gone ahead and die cut the sentiment that comes in the edition set. I've decided to go for the red just to pull out the red here on the toadstool. And I'm going to probably use a few more toadstools in the scene. So I have already got loads of my... I've got them mixed up here. I've got the circle editions. This is all from the circle here. But you can see I've got my die cut tree trunk there so I'm going to pop that in somewhere but I have all of my woodland animals already ready here just from obviously when I done the launch I've got lots left over so I'm going to just start playing around with where I want to put them it's probably going to be quite similar to the other one I do want to use the deer and I'm going to have her probably a bit further back this time and you can kind of like weave her you know in amongst the trees there so she's going to go there and then if I bring in this one here you can see kind of what I've done I had you know different animals here I've got the snail crawling up the tree and I've got quite a lot of them together there so I'm probably going to do similar there because I do love these two together and then add those in and then I'm just going to stick it all down and then decide on what I'm going to have for the belly band because you can see what I've done there just quite simple I'll put a couple together and then I'll show you what I've done everything now stuck down and then I've just got the little toadstools here so I thought I'd just show you so you just die cut the the dies here just die cut it in white and then I die cut it in red and just cut the tops off and stuck them on top of the white and then I'm just using a gel pen just to add a few little dots there and then I can just use a little bit of glue So there's a little bit of interest there. And then for the topper, so I did start doing this one. And then I thought, actually, I'm not so keen. So what I've done is I've just pulled out this Birthday Wishes, which is a card-making magic 
sentiment and I've got my belly band here so this is just a piece of A4 length so it's about 11 and 3 quarters and I'm going to close up the card and then sit it on the belly band just so you've got roughly the same amount overhanging I'm hoping this sentiment's going to work behind it it should do and you want to get it tight enough so it's you know it's not got like any kind of gaps on the side but you don't want it to be so tight that they can't pull it off but I think that is just going to work yeah I think that's going to be fine so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on here on this side and then if you just burnish the folds it just gives them a nicer finish and then you've got your belly band you can see that there holds it together really nicely. Okay, so that's today's tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed these book fold cards. They are fun to make and of course you don't need to use them with this woodland scene. They will work with many other dies that you have in your stash and for many other occasions as well. So I look forward to seeing your styles. If you're on Facebook, over to Mixed Up Crafters, which is our Facebook group, and you can share anything that you make following my tutorials over there. It's a really lovely group of people. So yeah, check it out. And if you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.